covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We're looking at North Korea tonight. Going to touch on a couple of other subjects, including that of Russia, Syria, uh, and Qatar. Uh, some very odd things happening over in Qatar, according to uh, Lorenzo, and already happened. But let's go over here to North Korea real quick. RT is reporting North Korea threatens to strike New York in response to a five-month-old Trump tweet. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. What in the world is wrong with a leader when they are willing to just take and lob off nuclear weapons when somebody tweets something that doesn't go their way? I mean, this is absolutely insane to even think that this type of a leader would do something like that. But then again, think of the mentality of the way people continue to do. Tweets have become a way of attacking each other verbally uh, and um, amongst many other things, temper tantrums and everything else. And it's not just uh, limited to that of Kim Jong-un of North Korea for acting this way over tweets, but even President Trump says some of the craziest things on, a tw on tweets. And I'm not against President Trump. I just say it's very strange, very seemingly unpresidential like or undictatorship like well i don't know maybe for kim jong un that would be normal of a dictator who really knows it's just not normal but anyway maybe uh, making ready for the threats because here we have on uh, 38north.org they are coming out today saying north korea uh, Panji Rai nuclear test site media report of incident intensified activity cannot be corroborated, but they are saying that North Korea is getting ready to do something there on their nuclear test site. There it says intensified activity of uh, Panji uh, Rai nuclear test site, indicating Pyongyang may be preparing a sixth nuclear test, which is warned last month was imminent, and that the preparations near the Punjirai site match those of the past occasions before North Korea conducted a nuclear test. Gosh, can I help but wonder with the way that uh, Kim Jong-un has been doing that eventually he's going to go beyond the test and actually do something for real. Uh, and yet at the same time, as we reported just the other day, the United States has moved their warships out of the region there uh, at least the two aircraft carriers, and, and not, maybe not a, a bit too soon with some of the advanced technology that North Korea is beginning to develop there and was lobbing out missiles over into the sea there where these carriers were at near the Jap Japanese Sea, the J uh, Sea of Japan. Uh, now we're also seeing, as I reported this to you the other day as well, the Chinese moved the de uh, de uh, def excuse me, Donfang 21 near the Korean Peninsula, and of course, again, I still do not believe this is something being used against North Korea, but rather uh, as a backup to North Korea in the event that the United States were to launch an attack on North Korea. And you may think that, well, that's not really that big of a deal, but there's something though, friends, that I think though that might just make you change your mind about all of this. And let me just pull over to where this is at. I thought I had it up on my screen here. Oh gosh, what did I do with this? Um, Wanted to share with you something here that uh, President Trump had to say. Here we go, right here. Uh, uh, excuse me, President Putin. That is President Putin. Uh, recently, uh, one of the one of the comments that he makes here in the interview with uh, uh, Mr. Stone here was very insightful. There, he's speaking to uh, Oliver Stone about the caucuses and how that the United States has been actively participating in trying to destabilize Russia. Now, of course, this has been some time back, but uh, this, uh, this was something that is still stuck in President Putin's mind, and he's not, uh, he's not just letting this go away either. President Putin, he's one, as the old saying is come, when it comes to Russians, he doesn't forget. And... Uh, and he's watching the movements of the United States. And this is why we see, too, that Russia is reaching out to all uh, of the countries that are being basically thrown under the bus by, the, uh, by NATO, uh, etc. And, of course, Qatar being one of those latest nations that President Putin uh, has reached out to. Now, you have to understand, Qatar, of course, they accuse him of sponsoring terrorism. Sure they do. Absolutely. I mean, come on, let's, let's face it. But the Saudis are the ones that accused him of that. That's what is totally blows your mind away. The Saudis and the Egyptians. Well, the Saudis are probably the number one terrorist-sponsored uh, state in the world, next to that of maybe 
Uh, some of, well, in fact, unfortunately, the United States has been sponsoring terrorism all over the world. Now, we call it democracy, but are we really there for democracy? You know, and I'm not, you know, I love my country, but unfortunately, I am really ashamed at the, at the way that we have been going, trying to destabilize all these countries in the Middle East. And what for? I mean, this, this has just really become absolutely insane the way we have been headed. You know, it's one thing if a, if a, if a dictator is brutalizing his people and, well, like in the case of Kim Jong-un, brutalizing his own people and absolutely no freedom whatsoever. And the U.S. wanted to take and try to free the people. Well, you don't go in there and nuke them. That's one way you're not going to free them by nuking them. Then, then you just kill them all, you know. But the thing is, is we go to a country like Syria that was actually more, uh, wasn't really a democracy. It is of, of some sort, you might say, under President Bashar al-Assad. But the thing was, is it was a country that was tolerant to both Jews and Christians and Muslims alike. They were, all three of the religions were able to get along peacefully. Well, that was until the United States decided to work with the Saudis and the Turks. And I don't think the Turks are any, anything good. They're not. Uh, the Turks are just like the Saudis. They're also number one sponsors of terrorism. And so Qatar, Qatar is just a little nation. Well, it uses its money to sponsor terrorism. And yeah, Russia has turned a uh, helping hand towards Qatar because they have been ousted from the family, you might say. Uh, well, speaking of Qatar, though, got a big issue going on in Qatar. Already happened on their website there. Uh, shared this video right here on his website. This was actually uh, allegedly a very large military convoy, a Qatarian military convoy that has just returned back from the border of the, of the Saudi border. No really, no reasoning for this, why they were returning from the Saudi border. Uh, no one is really saying anything about this other than the fact that this is the Qatarian military that, is, uh, that has left the Saudi border. Maybe tensions are starting to simmer down some. I don't really know the answer. The only reason I can see why they would move their forces away from the border. Of course, the Turkish also talking about sending their military in uh, to Qatar as well. Uh, they're all going to end up into a big mess over there in the Middle East, which I think this is exactly what some of the NATO partners really wanted in the first place. This has just really gotten out of hand. Sputnik News is reporting also that uh, Rex Tillerson, uh, Secretary of State, says Trump has no authorization to target Assad nor the Iranian proxies in Syria. Now, that was an about face. President Trump has no congressional authorization to order strikes against Damascus or Iran, Iran's proxies in Syria, according to Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. President Donald Trump has no congressional authorization, he says. I would agree with that, Tillerson said, when asked if there was uh, no legal authorization from Congress to target Syrian President Bashar Assad or Iranian proxies. Tillerson stressed that the U.S. mission and purpose in Syria has not changed uh, from its focus on defeating Daesh. The U.S.-led coalition has been fighting the terrorist group in Syria since 2014 without U.N. approval or Assad's request. On June 8th, the coalition bombed pro-Damascus forces in Syria near the town of al Tat. On June 6th, the coalition conducted a strike on pro-Syrian government forces as they entered uh, a deconfliction zone and allegedly posed threat. On May 18th, the coalition hit a pro-Assad fighters near al Tant for the first time. On April the 6th, U.S. Navy destroyers fired 59 cruise missiles at Aish Sharit Air Base in western Syria, calling their attack a warning to Damascus following a chemical weapons incident in Idlib province, which Washington claimed was carried out by the Syrian government forces. Uh, and of course, we can go on and on and on. I'll put a link to uh, Sputnik's uh, report in here. But the U.S. has targeted the Syrian government on multiple occasions, not to mention the fact that the U.S. government uh, has aided and funded all the different groups that are fighting against President Bashar al-Assad in the first place. So if you really don't have any authorization to go after Assad in Damascus, then isn't it con still, con still considered an accessory uh, to the crime by arming all the terrorists that are fighting against the government to overthrow the government. And according to the uh, Syrian reports and Russian reports, 35 nationalities are fighting inside of Syria. 
According to President Bashar al-Assad, he said it's not a civil war when you've got 35 different nations fighting against one government inside their own country. He said that is not a civil war. I have to agree with the man on that. It's pretty much telling the truth about that. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching this video live. Thank you for watching. Support the work. You can look right here on our new channel. Just above the subscribe.